Christmas. So um, I hope everyone's having a great Christmas because Christmas is already here for me. I'm home and I have just, I'm in my pajamas all the time watching Christmas movie. I finished The Grinch today. So yes, Christmas is here for me. And I know it's a week away, but like I celebrate Christmas. Like I started Christmas prep in last month, like November. I was ready for Christmas and now Christmas is here. So Sunita, what are you doing for Christmas this year? Christmas is actually nice time of the year when you know you can just you can just forget about everything and just look at people and be happy you're with family that's that's what Christmas is all about for me being with friends going out you know going out for a nice party drink some good wine it's all about a happy uh, time <laughs> yeah I was I mean I'm so lucky that I was able to make it home this time because um it was just crazy traveling you know so yeah, I mean, everyone who's out there, be safe this Christmas and I hope you all get to spend it with your family. So temperature is dropping outside. However, in the Amazon world, the temperature is going crazy because it's getting hot on Amazon and I'm talking about bidding wars. Sunita, how much did you pay for uh, one bid this time? Like how, I just want to understand how crazy it is on the platform right now. Amazon is technically and in a very realistic way with everything pushing towards e-commerce and digital buying and everything bids are the craziest this year every year it's been increasing and increasing this year it's been the craziest with most of the products reaching close to 120 times the usual cost per click they have around wow. this time also. so usually during q4 and christmas the bids go crazy high but year and year the cost per click has even gone up to 300 percent in one particular category especially in uh, you know uh decoratives and home supplies there yeah. are products for which have paid a bid uh, for which we've been bidding close to seven dollars wow That's the average cost per click not even the uh click for keyword so it's it's a crazy time of the year where you're paying a lot the conversions are also amazing yeah so i want to understand from you guys whoever is watching right now tell me what's the highest you've paid this year or this um this q4 for, for one bid i just want to understand how that's working for you all and i think seller app was really smart this way because we told all our clients way in advance you know that we anticipated this that it's going to happen because we saw that e-commerce has grown so much this year and it was like you know it was given that the bidding is also going to be crazy so i'm glad that we already informed all of our clients that hey look out save some extra money for the bids because it is going to get crazy and it did oh, wow i'm mean, imagine paying seven dollars for a bid but i hope uh people watching right now are not overspending on your bid so just because something is trendy doesn't mean you just bid on it Make sure that it's actually relevant to your um, listing and then you're converting. So Sunita, what according to you, one thing that seller need to keep in mind while they are preparing for this Q4 season, except hot chocolates and pajamas and Christmas <laughs> movies, because it's the holiday season, but in Amazon world, what is one thing that they should keep in mind? So everybody talks about keywords and listing optimization and, uh, you know, doing things right. But something that I would really suggest sellers to do is not to worry a lot during this time, but instead stay calm and focused and stay prepared. You know, there <laughs> are things that are expected to, you know, be completely abnormal. It's it's definitely not the way things are going to be how it has been the rest of the year. So the first thing that you need to do is to ensure that you're calm and to stay motivated. I've seen people give up during December. It's like it's too much. It's a lot of pressure. I just can't do this anymore. So that's the first thing, given that everybody's been staying at home and you know, you have your work, you're working, you're sleeping in the same place you just go out to the table work come back here and go to sleep so there's no differentiation for most of the people uh and with most amazon sellers uh they do this as um you know second business it's, the, right. it's something that they do as a hustle so that they can make more money which means it's added pressure so 
keeping your mental strength and also staying positive is something that i would really suggest sellers to do this um you know christmas that's the first thing you got to check off am i motivated enough to carry this in a way that i will start making profits then yeah. the next thing is to prepare well ahead in hand so in every sense whether it's your keywords it's your listing it's your ppc campaigns all of these things require preparation each of them have you know certain requirements and certain criteria for you to ensure that they're running really well the week before christmas nobody buys anything during 24th to 25th everybody yeah. purchases well in hand so right now you must be seeing a huge increase in your sales so this is the time when you have to make sure that everything is running like a well oiled machine if it's not then you have to give attention to make sure it is so stay prepared so that you can start doing things in a much better way right so um as i said that i have a quick checklist here so everyone watching right now if you have done these things already make sure that you comment down below saying check so that you know that you know we can do this checklist together So I think Sumita, you can participate as well. So starting, I have five points in my checklist. So everyone in the comment section, if you've done this already, say check. So for the first thing, advertising weeks in advance. So if your advertising campaigns are running already, they're running smoothly. Do not make any changes right now because um, Christmas is only a week away. So make sure that you say check in the caption in the comment box below if you're doing this. So if your advertising campaigns are running, check. Sure. Now the second thing. Second thing is make sure that your products are retail ready. This means that your A plus content is should be spot on. So what I mean by this is I suggested this that uh, you know make sure that your listings look holiday friendly. So if your products can wear a small Christmas hat, that is going to be so cute, and this has been proven to convert your sales. And so some of my clients have already done it, and they have seen like a huge increase in their sales. So. Whoopi, if you are done with your A plus content and made your listings ready for Christmas, say check. Third one is confirm that you don't run out of stock over this Christmas period, which is so important because we saw this during Prime Day, where you know most of the people ran out of stocks because they didn't anticipate uh, the amount of influx that they got. And knowing that the shops are closed right now because of COVID, you are going to be expecting a lot of sales. FBA, FPM does not matter. Make sure that you're stocked up well in advance. fourth one is use prime eligibility to your advantage which means that you need to take advantage of being prime and that happens uh, and this will help you get the buy box as well so amazon is going to naturally organically push your products and the fifth one which is the last one make sure that you're eligible to sell your products over christmas period so um this might not apply to all of you right now because amazon has made some of the categories gated uh this christmas mainly toys and things so if you are a part of the gated uh, category make sure that you have some plans ready for q1 to make up for the profits so getting sunita back online right now sunita um ppc so when we talk about ppc we have a question right now so matthew john is back hi matthew how's it going So Matthew is asking I'm new to Amazon PPC and I can't get a decent impressions. I'm bidding almost two times the suggested bid. What am I doing wrong here? So um as I mentioned before Sunita and I mentioned before that bidding is going to get crazy and it has already get gotten crazy on Amazon. But what according to you Sunita uh Matthew should do? Uh so the first thing to know about can not getting impressions this before we jump on to increasing the bidding for your product and uh trying to uh, you know uh reach a point where you're not even making profits most of the sellers do uh they sell a product of 10 dollars but their bids are like 2 dollars and 3 dollars they might not even be making profits but they're just trying to get impressions so that's something that i've seen a lot of sellers do but the thing most of them don't um you know most of the people don't understand this the reason why you might not get a lot of impressions for your product is because amazon might not recognize this particular keyword to be related to your product at all in most of the cases this has been one of the main reasons why you don't really get a lot of impressions 
So this happens either because you have uh, your product listing doesn't include that keyword at all, or if it does include, it's not been indexed for that particular keyword. So the first thing for you to do is to check if the keyword is included in the product listing. It could be in the title, it could be in the bullets, or it could be in the product description. So you do advertise for different set of keywords, right? So the main keywords go into the title. So that gives you a better probability of getting indexed for that keyword. So if you haven't included the term that you're advertising for in that particular order, do include that. If you have already, then you've got to check the indexing status for the keyword. So what you could do could be to quickly use a tool like Salar Apps Index Checker. You can just input the keyword in there against the product ASIN. So for every product within Salar Apps dashboard, you can um, you can start adding uh, different sets of keywords where you can check if the keyword is indexed for your product at all. If it's not, then you've got to move them to a more prominent position within the listing, like I said earlier. If it's indexed and it's also included in the product listing and you still don't get a lot of impressions for, then it's possibly because your history associated with that particular keyword has been really bad. So you'll have to bid quite high for you to get good amount of sales. So what I'd suggest you to do if it's indexed and also it's included in the product listing would be to bid extremely high and check what is the average cost per click that you get. Sometimes you might end up bidding uh, much more than what is the suggested bid for you to get a placement. So once you get the placement, so the placement is also a factor of what is your bidding strategy. So based on what is your bidding strategy and how much you have uh, been utilizing the placement multipliers, it depends on where you uh, where your uh, ad impression is being placed as well. So if you're getting placed in the top, if you're trying to get placed in the top of the search, you might end up bidding much more than how much you might pay as, uh, to get placed in the uh, in between the search results. When you open up Amazon search pages, you can see some ads pop up right on the top. There are advertisements in between the search results. So for you to get placed in different set in different sections, there are different cost per clicks that you might incur. So depending on what you are intending to get placed for, you might want to increase your uh, bid value. So once you do both of these checks and you still don't get indexed to that keyword, it might particularly be a keyword of high volume, which could be one of the possible reasons, even if you're bidding against the word around the suggested bid or even more than the suggested bid, you might not get placed or you might even not get impressions. But from the first and the second thing, uh, if the keyword is included in the product, if it's already indexed, then you should ideally start getting impressions for the a keyword. If you don't, then you've got to adjust your placement multipliers and also increase the bidding in such a way that you start getting impressions. So this should hopefully solve your problem. If it still doesn't, you might want to run an automatic campaign and check what are the sort of keywords for which you're getting impressions for. So based on that, you can elaborate your PPC uh, manual campaigns. Yep, and if that answered your question, Matthew, let us know in the comment section below. And if you have any more doubts, uh, I will just contact Seller App Man. We got you. <laughs> All right. So a quick, um, just a quick disclaimer before we move in. We might not be able to answer all the questions that we're getting, but we will try our best. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you're not, if you're not able to answer your questions, uh, we will reach out to you, or you can reach out to us at contact us at the rateSellerApp.com. So taking the next question, um, Raj Mohammad. Hi Raj, how's it going? How can I start making profit? I think this is a million dollar question that all the people who sell on Amazon have. So if you're a new seller, you will take some time to make profit because you know Amazon being such a huge marketplace now um, is facing a lot of comp uh, a lot of competition as well. So um, I think it depends on the product that you're selling and uh, what type of strategy that you take. So I think Sunita is going to help you out with it. So um, just to follow up to add more um, 
more words. To Raj, he also says that he is uh, all the products that he's shipping are in excellent packaging and damage. And there, I'm hoping there's no damage in transportation. So keeping that in mind, Sunita, how can how can Raj start making profit? Right. So, uh, Raj, if this is something that you have to really address uh, more as a buyer than as a seller. So just imagine if you are trying to get trying to buy a new product and you end up with something. It's an amazing packaging. You spend some time trying to design the packaging, but while it arrives, it's all crumpled or, you know, the edges are all squished. You will definitely not be happy with the way the product comes to you. So even if it's just the packaging, you might want to ensure that you have put up enough fillers. So there are bubble wrap. So this is something that most sellers take some time to understand and to come up with a packaging that's also effective in terms of the price so for the fba fees and uh, you know for the supplier fees so that they get a packaging that's done neat and nice and also doesn't weigh a lot because if your package starts weighing a lot because you've been adding in papers or you know bubble wraps just to make sure that your product is nice and the package ends up being nice when it's delivered to the customer you might end up paying a lot of fees so what you got to do with your product is right now because it's already within uh, amazon's warehouse i'm hoping that you don't have a lot of stock that's already there within amazon so if it is there you might want to change your condition that the product so within amazon you can sell products as new products that have been opened products that are uh, you know used so there are different sets of products that you can list them under so if the product packaging is a is in a very bad shape it's completely damaged then i wouldn't suggest you to sell them as new because people might find it not worth the price they might come mm -hmm. back and write bad reviews which might not really work in your favor but getting all those packages back to your place and fixing the uh, packaging and then sending it back to amazon's warehouse might not again be a very profitable thing for you to do so based on your product price understanding if you're using a third party supplier to check uh, sorry a third party inspector to check your products once they've reached uh, you know, if they're leaving from China to a particular place, they're reaching the US, then you could check, you could have an inspector who checks that before they reach FBA's warehouse. So from there, you could separate products that can be sold as new. So these are products that are not damaged. I'm hoping that they are. there are some products that are not damaged. So if there are products that are not damaged, you could sell them as new. The ones that are damaged, you can change, change the option as yeah. refurbished uh, sorry refurbished would be in the case of electronic electronics wood. yeah right right yeah so in the case of uh products you can uh look at used or packaging opened there are different conditions that amazon provides amazon is a very clear description of what you could list them under so just look at what could be the best option for you to do you might have to change a bit of the pricing based on uh what could be the best for products that have a really bad packaging in terms of making profits so this might be a question that everybody wonders about you know how when and where do i start making profits that's the question that everybody needs an answer to if you're selling one product if you're selling 100 products this is something that everybody worries about so the it's definitely not one answer it's not you know some very simple magic trick that you can suddenly start making profits it depends on what is your product what how many days has it been been since you're selling do you even make a note of your numbers so the first thing that you need to understand about selling on a marketplace like amazon is that making profits depend on how good you are at you know maintaining your numbers and understanding what is your profit margin where exactly do you make a profit so most of the times people don't really uh put enough thought into writing down the numbers you might be so in in your case you will definitely lose a lot of uh money for the products that are damaged 
So you might want to sub subtract this and consider the other factors where you are spending money. You must definitely be doing PPC advertisements. So considering all your numbers, there are different stages within Amazon selling as well. So just when you start a pro just when you launch a product, say, you will definitely not reach the level of a seller or a product that's been selling for maybe even three months. They must definitely have a lot of sales volume. They'll have a lot of reviews. So for a new seller who is just launched with absolutely no reviews or no sales history to start selling like the product that's been selling from possibly even three months, it's definitely not possible. So based on your product, based on the growth of the product, how many reviews you're getting, what sort of effort you put towards your marketing and getting reviews. So it's not just about doing a lot of marketing. By marketing, I mean running ads within Amazon, outside of Amazon, fixing your listing as well. So once you do all of this, you must have a set margin and a set time period when you must reach this. So in the case of most products, the launch phase is around 30 to 45 days, during which you might not even break even. You might not even make money as to how much if you put in $10 for, if you, let's say you put $100 for one particular product, you might be spending $150 in the place of where you've invested, you must be expecting a return of uh, $100. So you might want to look separate your uh, product phase into different time periods, launch, where you might be spending much more than what you're making. The growth, this is where you start making a bit of profits. So this is where, where you're paying $100, you might start making 120 and then eventually you make 120 50. So this is the phase where in a picture, your ROA comes in, return on advertisements, ad spend comes in a picture, your ROI, that's the return on investment comes in a picture. So there's a fortnight back where I talk specifically about how to increase ROI uh, using Salar app and also without using Salar app. But if you're running campaigns, there are very easy things that you could do within Seller Apps dashboard for your PPC campaigns. So Seller App has uh, a lot of rules that lets you a lot of rules that lets you uh, set up campaigns in such a way that you start making good ROI. So your ROI definitely depends on how much you are bidding against how much you're making. So there are rules that will allow you to set bids. So this particularly works on bid optimization. So what you could do is if you're running a campaign, you can set up rules. So these are again automated rules which doesn't require a lot of intervention. So you might so the problem with most Amazon sellers, one of the reasons that I've seen a lot of Amazon sellers not really optimizing their campaigns is also because of the amount of work that's involved. So setting up rules or automation within your PPC campaigns avoids avoid that amount of you know work that goes into coming every day morning and checking if your bids are optimized or if your ACoS is going beyond a threshold point. If your ACoS is going beyond a threshold point, then you might want to reduce your bids. So this is a rule that helps you optimize your ROI. So what you can do is you could sign up to Salo Rap. There's a seven day free trial. Once you get into the trial, you will definitely have some good amount of time for you to set up all these rules, check how these work. So what I would suggest, especially around Q4, given that there's a lot of work that keeps going around. So what this lets you do is it lets you choose a particular condition. So here you could set what is the A cost. If you reach a particular A cost, then you start reducing your bid or increasing your bid so that you reach a particular ROI. So let's say you want to reach an ROAS of four. So you have an ACOS. This could be your target ACOS or the ACOS for you to reach your ROAS. So there's always a cr uh, the cross verification that you can do for you to reach your target ROAS. What should be your ACOS? So based on that, set your target 
pay costs on how many orders so once you reach these particular numbers you could start reducing the bids in steps so if your highest acos that you could reach could be around 50 then you once you reached 50 percent acos and you start reducing your bid so this works in the reverse way of reaching your goal so usually what most sellers do is that they work around a goal and then hope that you reach the goal so instead what we do is the reverse so we set a goal so based on the goal what should be your ideal uh, cost per click and also what should be your ideal a cost so based on this you can start reduce uh, seller apps rules automatically starts reducing your bid so that you ensure that you reach your particular roa roi yep and i think this is a perfect um, example of how you cannot overspend by setting up a budget. So very well explained, Sunita. I think that was really interesting. And um, coming to if you're if you're a really new seller, Raj, I would um, you know just make sure that your listings are okay. Make sure that you get enough reviews. And I think these two things, according to me, are the most important. So if you have enough reviews, you can see that you organically start ranking higher as well. So start from the beginning. If you are a new seller, I'm not sure if you're a new seller, but start from the beginning and then make your way up to the ladder. Okay, so Sunita, moving on to the next question. I see there's so many questions out here already. So, um, okay, so the next question is, great session, guys. Thank you, William. I have a question for you. I've started running my PPC campaign for my new products recently. Do you have any suggestions to increase my ROI? I mean, Sunita just covered this. So um, there's also a video in the comment section down below that will help you increase your ROI. Sunita just did it a few days back, so it is going to help you for sure. So moving on to the next question, um, do you suggest, okay, so first of all, hi, Nancy. Hi, Sunita. Uh, while creating my PPC campaigns, do you suggest fixed bids or dynamic bid down only? I'm concerned about my CPC here. Okay, so I mean, this is why we do lives, you know? So if you're worried, if you have any anxiety, put it in the comment section below and we are here to take care of you. It's Christmas, everyone's supposed to be chilling. So if you have any anxiety, any questions, put them in the comment section below and let us take care of it. So Sunita, go ahead and take this question. Hi Nancy, this is something that most people uh, do by trial and error. They start bidding around 50 cents, increase it to 70 cents, and they start seeing some, um, you know, some turnover. They start seeing some orders come in, and th then you are left with no option but to go with the bid that you might not really work for your product. So the first thing that I would suggest before even getting down to uh, fixing your cost per click is to separate out your campaigns based on what is the type uh, type or say the goal of the campaign so it's always wise to break this down because it helps in these factors so i've been talking at length about why structuring your campaigns is important why you need to uh, you know set up different campaign types for different products based on the goal based on your keyword and all those things so one of the reasons why you need different bidding strategies is also depending on the type of keyword your campaign might work for a particular bidding strategy whereas for another campaign let's say let's let's work it with an example so let's say you're working you are trying to run a campaign for your competitor brand names so let's say you're selling brand x you have brand y you have brand z all of these brands are something against which you know you will definitely start making good sales so you're trying to bid for these keywords so in this case you might particularly work very well if you're using fixed bids only because amazon gives preference for those products just just in one of the earlier questions, I was talking about how to start getting impressions. And in that, I was talking about how including the right key, the same keyword within your product listing. Once you include the keyword, you start to get, you got to get indexed for that particular keyword. So all of this will be a benefiting factor for your competitor 
who has his brand name mentioned in the title he's indexed for those keywords so for you to run an advertisement against that keyword and start getting placements might be a tough draw until and unless you're bidding very well so fixed bids particularly help because in the case of dynamic bid whether you use dynamic down only or up and down amazon starts increasing or reducing your bid depending on whether amazon's algorithms think that the keyword might convert for you so though the, this might seem a little bit complicated to understand at first amazon's algorithm just just takes your product things if it works for your product if it doesn't work for your product if the keyword has been converting so far if it hasn't if it hasn't so far and it, amazon thinks that it might not work very well based on the fact that it's never converted so far so it starts reducing the bid so in the case of keywords which particularly have not gotten any conversion so far you might want to start off with fixed bids so these again in the case of keywords that have not converted very well so far assuming that your product has been selling for some time now so in that case you might want to go for fixed bids so while you're doing fixed bids so one of the things that you could try would again be i would again suggest uh, nancy to be using automation automated rules which again reverse engineer how your bids must be based on what your a cost should be and what your target will be so if you have a particular target you have an ideal cost per click range based on the conversion so you have the a cost the a cost is a factor of how much you're spending versus how much you're making so how much you will make definitely depends on your conversion rate so for 10 clicks if you're getting one sale so that definitely tells that you need to get 10 clicks for you to get at least one sale so based on that you can always reverse engineer the cost per click range so this is something that is pretty complicated if you try to do it manually which is again one of the reason why automated rules and automation helps because this keeps changing so if your conversion changes let's say a week later you gotta sit and work these numbers down for you to start bidding around your range and also changing changing the bids around this range every day becomes a task so which is why i would suggest for you to take a look at your product write down your conversion rate so setting up automation again requires you to look at these numbers for once so you look at what is your target a cost what should be your ideal um you know a cost that you got to receive and what is the maximum bid that you could go towards is based on what is your conversion rate and what is your target a cost so based on this the automation tool again starts adjusting your bids in such a way that your cost per click is kept in mind so that you also reach your target a cost so if you don't if you are not able to use automated rules then i would suggest you to separate down along with separating down your campaign so this is a must whether or not you use automated rules the first thing for you to do would be to separate out your campaigns in such a way that the goals are clearly identifiable so once this is done the next thing for you to do manually would be to instead of using the rules you might want to write down what is your target a cost look at your conversion rate so based on what i was talking about earlier so if it requires you to get 10 clicks for you to get one order so you just multiply that by your average cost per click and what is the target a cost so that will reach you around the uh, get you the target a cost so instead of that you put your target a cost so you want to reach around the percentage of target a cost so based on that what should be your cost per click so you can work this around and try to come up with the ideal cost per click and based on the campaign type and the goal so if you're trying to get sales for a keyword that's never converted so in that case go for fixed bid and apply this bit in the case of down only go for that as the maximum value so that would be the suggested bit that you're entering so amazon reduces this bit if 
you are able to bid on a lower level as compared to what you're bidding. So this should particularly fix your problem given that you're also worried about your cost per click. So goal-based optimization is something that works really well given that there's a lot of competition also that's increasing around Q4. So not just around Q4, Going further as well, during Q1 and the next Q1 and Q2 as well, we are expecting a lot of new sellers to start selling on Amazon as compared to how many number of sellers are within the marketplace. So you must continue to see a lot of competition. So goal-based optimization for your PPC campaigns is something that I suggest for all the sellers to take up. Given that PPC optimization takes a lot of time and most sellers have a ton of other things to do so there's there's obviously a lot that you need to be worried about including your packaging and you know uh, maintaining your inventory so hopefully this helps nancy yep um nancy if you answered your question let us know in the comment section below that we did and um coming to the new sellers so if there's anyone watching right now who's planning to start an amazon fba business or if you're not a seller yet uh i mean we have a really good webinar coming on thursday with alibaba on how you can source your products so go on our um social media page on seller up social media page and all the information about the webinar will be there and coming to the profit question again you know i was just thinking about that question and i have uh, you know, I had a session with Amy recently, Sunita, and Amy told me that when she did an, an analysis of, um, you know, her businesses and people who are selling on Amazon, some people are better off working in McDonald's because that's how less they're earning. And that hurt me because, first of all, if you don't know your numbers, you are not doing a good job. You have to be your own accountant. I mean, I understand that you're outsourcing. Your, your numbers and people who take care of your numbers, but you need to understand your numbers as well. So if you're, for people especially who are trying to start an Amazon business, I would suggest that you make sure that you find a product that you can scale to 3X or 5X or 7X. I mean, 7X is your sweet, sweet point. I mean, Bazinga, if you are selling a product at 7X value. So make sure that you're sourcing a product uh, at a price range that you can multiply by three and sell it on Amazon to see to make sure that you are able to put that money back in the cycle and then you can reinvest in your own business otherwise you are going to be broke people just make sure that you are your own accountant Absolutely. so before we end yes i mean it's it's surprising to me how people just forget this they're like oh i'm making this much amount of profit on my business and yeah that's enough amount of money for me to reinvest but then you have ppc you have amazon costs you have so many costs that people don't even consider and then they're broke so yes uh, when you are planning to source, first of all, attend the sourcing webinar that's happening on Thursday to um, you know understand the new sourcing, uh, how sourcing is going to be in 2021 because there are a lot of disruptions that has happened. So be prepared well in advance. And yeah, hopefully you all will be good to go. So before we end this live, I want to take one last question. And if you have any other questions, I have put the seller app support link in the bio or in the comment section. So do put us or put all the questions there. So one last question and it's by Anthony. Hi, Anthony Harris. So I have a question on PPC. I have a limited budget to run my sponsored product campaigns during holidays, how to make the most out of it in limited budget. So Sunita, I would like to start off uh, the answer because I actually was reading about this just now. So what you need to do is you need to start day parting. So day parting is when you manually split your budget and you focus on high sales at a specific generating time. So what you do, Anthony, right now is you go analyze the data. You know, when this live ends, you go analyze the data and you see in which time duration you're getting the maximum sales. And you make sure that you're running your PPC campaigns, campaigns at that specific time to save money, if not running at all times. So that would, the, this is what I would suggest. So Sunita, what do you suggest? This is this is definitely something that's extremely helpful. So day parting is something that most people don't even know about. Uh, so just to make it quite simple, day parting is where you take, let's say you have a daily budget of $10. You understand that during different time period, you have different sales. But on an average, you might observe that during Sundays, certain products get a lot of sales. During the weekdays, there are absolutely no sales. So in cases of such products, 
it might be better off to invest that money over the weekend in cases of some products you can see that end of the day you see a lot of sales so this is this could be something that varies from product to product niche to niche uh, you know even between a particular brand different products have different uh, you know converting time periods not just the day but also the time in which the product starts converting uh, so based on this what you can do is to allocate budget in such a way that you make that you enhance the performance of the campaign during the converting time the second strategy that you could do if you would see a consistent or say you don't observe any pattern so it there, there could also be possible that there's absolutely no pattern you see a sale on monday the next sale you see is on wednesday then during the weekend you make three sales the next week it's a complete flip you see a sale every day so you don't really know what is the particular pattern that your product has and this is the same pattern that you see throughout there's nothing there's nothing that you can map as a pattern so in this case the best is to allocate the budget evenly so that it run so that the campaigns run throughout the day so this is something that's very helpful for products in most cases in 80% of the cases you don't see a lot of pattern or there is no uh, pattern for which you can separate the budget in a way that you can allocate it to a particular day or you can allocate it to a particular hour of the day so in that case the uh, the parting that we yeah, will evenly distribute your budget throughout the day so what you can do if you have a budget of ten dollars is to allocate the budget of five dollars before 12 five dollars after 12. so this ensures that your campaign runs throughout the day so how do you understand when you are getting sales you can you can quickly go into your amazon seller central go to business reports so within, within business reports under uh, the sales dashboard you can see the time period in which you're getting sales so this it's, it's a very nice graph where you can see from 12 a.m to 12 in the night when are you exactly getting sales there's a comparison chart which also says the previous day previous week or say the previous year depending on the time frame you check a change the dates vary on the graph so based on this you can understand during what time of the day you're getting sales and day parting is not something that amazon seller central lets you do so for which you will have to use to like seller app that allocates your budget evenly throughout the day or particularly focuses it on a pretty uh, on a day during the entire week so this is again something that comes within the automation rule where you can allocate the budget for a particular time of the day or allocate it evenly so this can again be found in the automation rules within seller apps dashboard where you can set up day parting where the budget will be allocated evenly throughout the day so this works pretty well for people who have a limited budget so in the case of most new sellers you might not want to allocate a lot of budget given that you don't understand the uh, whether the product might really work in your favor or you're just wasting money because you don't have a lot of observations to look at whether you even need to allocate good budget but along with the budget these small things where you optimally use your budget helps you to make the best sale so instead of going out of going completely out of your ppc budget in like 15 minutes of you launching the campaign using something like day parting particularly helps so this is something that i would ask, suggest anthony to do as well uh i mean and yeah imagine running out of budget uh 15 minutes in your advertising campaign that's like straight out of a nightmare so yeah, I mean, I think we have reached the end of our stream and thank you so much for everyone who joined and asked questions. If you have any more questions, reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help. So yeah, have Merry, Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope everyone has a really nice Christmas. Uh, I hope everyone's uh, sales skyrocket and has an amazing quarter. 
And yeah, Sunita, I think the next time we'll be seeing them will be for Q1 prep. And I saw um, in the comment section, Syed wants to have a session solely on PPC. So for those of you watching right now, if you want another live stream, only for your PPC questions, we can do that. Uh, we're completely in for that. So let us know if you want that. And we got you, we'll do it. So yeah, if not, we will see you all for Q1 prep. And I think this is it. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Have a great holiday season. Thank you so much for being here, Sunita. Thank you, Ria, and everybody have a merry, merry Christmas. All right, then. Bye-bye.